Well, hey, Josh here from Youth Life, where we want to help you connect to Jesus, cultivate your faith in Him, and celebrate the new life that He gives. Part of how we do that is by answering questions which you guys send in, and this video is part two, answering the question, what makes Christianity different from other religions? If you haven't already seen part one, make sure you go and watch it now. Link down in the description. In part one, uh, we talked about the most beautiful thing about Christianity, uh, and that is the word grace. It's why I want to believe. It's what makes me want to be a Christian. But just wanting to believe something isn't really enough, is it? There's something else we need. There's something more than grace that we need to set Christianity apart. We said that there were two words that make Christianity different to other religions. The first is grace. The second is truth, grace and truth. I am convinced that not only is Christianity wonderful because of grace, but Christianity is true. I want to share with you guys some of the reasons that I am convinced. The first is this. Why am I convinced that gravity is true? I'm convinced that the theory of gravity is true because I look around me at the world and I see things happen. When I drop something, it falls. Things don't just float off in the sky. I see things happen in the world and the theory of gravity explains those things well. The first reason I believe Christianity is true is because it explains things well. It explains why this world exists in the first place, why there's something and not nothing, where this universe came from where we came from. But more than just where this universe came from, it explains why people are like they are. See, throughout history, humans have been responsible for some of the most wonderful, kind, generous, beautiful things that have ever happened in this universe. And that makes sense because we understand that God made us in his image. He made us a bit like him. And so it explains those good things. But at the same time, humans have been responsible, haven't we, for some of the most wicked, some of the most evil, some of the, the worst things that this world has ever seen. And that makes sense too when we understand sin and the fact that we've rebelled against the God who made us good. And that has kind of broken us on the inside so that we do evil that we shouldn't do and that so often we don't even want to do. See, and that's the other thing that Christianity explains really well. It explains me to myself. See, there's times where what I need to hear and what I see in myself is that I'm uh, made in God's image and loved by the God of the universe. And there's other times where I see in myself just a, a brokenness and I'm discouraged by the fact that I can't seem to fix it. And it's in those moments, whether the times where um, I'm really grateful for something and thankful for the way God's made me, or perhaps the times where I'm lamenting not being who I wish I was, those are the times that Christianity explains to me who I am. And so because it explains this universe, it explains other people, it explains myself, Christianity makes sense to me. But there's more than that for why we say Christianity is true in a way that sets it apart from the other religions. Christianity is a religion which we can check out historically, right? We can look into the history behind it. It happened in this world in ways that we can go and investigate. And we could spend and years and years at university learning about all the different ways that's true. But I just want to give you a couple of examples to kind of whet your appetite. And then maybe you can go and research some more. The first one is this, the book of Isaiah. The Bible says that the book of Isaiah was written about 700 years before Jesus was born. In it, we find a whole heap of verses that talk about Jesus, where he's going to be born, the sort of life he's going to live, how people will treat him, and ultimately how he will die so that people can be forgiven for their sins. That's all in the book of Isaiah. And so it's easy to think, well, maybe that was actually just written after Jesus was born and lived and died. Um, and, and then people said it came earlier to try to make Christianity sound better, except for this amazing story. In 1946, three shepherds just a little way away from Jerusalem in Israel were out looking for a lost sheep, right? How biblical is that? And one of them throws a stone into a cave and they hear like a breaking sound. When they go back later to, to look and see what it was, they find a heap of clay jars and in those jars, a bunch of scrolls. It turns out what they had found was a whole heap of scrolls making up the Old Testament, which had been hidden away almost 2000 years ago. One of the scrolls they found was the book of Isaiah. It's a scroll over seven meters long. And when they investigated to see how old that scroll was, it dates one to 200 years before Jesus was born. Right, the book of Isaiah actually was written before Jesus was born. We found a copy of it from before Jesus was born and it says all that stuff about him. This is not some story that was made up afterwards to try to make Jesus seem more special. It's 
history. An example from the New Testament, John chapter 5, there's a story of Jesus healing someone beside the pool of Bethesda. And it's described in a little bit of detail. It says that there was this pool and it had five columned walkways, like undercover areas around the pool. And for ages, people used to bag out this particular story because that pool didn't seem to exist. People said, oh, it must just be a made up story. And then in the 19th century, a guy who was digging in and around Jerusalem found that pool. I'll put some pictures up here for you to have a look at and links down below. You can go and read this story yourself. They found the pool exactly as it's described in the Bible. See, the Bible is not just made up as a hoax. It was written by the people at the time. It's the true story of God interacting with people on this planet. And when we go to it, we can find out the truth about God. But the greatest claim of Christianity is not just that there was a pool in Jerusalem um, or even the writings of Isaiah. The greatest claim claim of Christianity is who Jesus was, the life that he lived, the miracles he did, the death he died, and that he came back from the dead. And all of those are things which we can check out historically. It's unique for Christianity that its biggest, greatest claims can be investigated in that way. Muhammad went into a cave, received revelations, came back out, told them to his followers and said, you just have to trust me on this one. Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, received messages via golden tablets interpreted by an angel, which were then taken away and everyone just had to take his word for it. Christianity is not a take my word for it afterwards religion. It's a check out the history religion. We know that Jesus lived that's recorded in multiple different ancient historians' works, not just Christian, even non-Christian historians. We know where he lived. We know the sorts of things that he was famous for teaching. We know the sorts of miracles that he was famous for doing. We know that he was crucified just as the Bible says he was. And so then the big one, can we actually know that he came back from the dead, proving who he was, proving that it's all true? Well, when the disciples came out on that Easter Sunday, they didn't just come out to all of the people of Jerusalem and say, Jesus has come back from the dead, take our word for it. It wasn't just, he told us about this in a secret room and now we're gonna tell everyone. No, instead, Jesus appeared to people in the ancient capital city of Jerusalem. Jesus spent 40 days appearing to hundreds of people in all different places and even in other parts of the country, making it clear to everyone that he had come back from the dead. That's written about, again, not just in the Bible, but other historians. At any point, all the Jews or the Romans would have to do to get rid of Christianity when it was first starting up is pull out Jesus' body and show it to everyone. Say, see, he hasn't come back from the dead. Yet they never brought out the body. Why? Because that tomb was empty. They didn't steal the body. The Jews and the Romans, they didn't want Christianity around. So could it have been the disciples? Well, the problem there is the disciples were terrified. They were running scared on that first Easter when Jesus was put to death when he was crucified. And yet, just Days later, they're courageous and they're brave, they're bold, they're telling everyone Jesus is back from the dead, and then they're being killed for it. They're being beheaded, they're being speared, they're being boiled alive. And did you know, none of those followers of Jesus ever took it back. None of them came out and said, ah, oh, it was actually just a hoax. If, if you and a bunch of mates made up some lie to try and get famous or get rich, and then you started being killed for it, started being thrown in jail, you can probably even pick who the mate is who's gonna sell out, right? Who is it who's gonna go and tell everyone? Well, none of the disciples ever said that they made it up. They were willing to die for it. And I think if they knew it was a lie, if they'd stolen the body, they wouldn't have all been willing to die for that lie. See, the Bible is not just made up hoaxes and myths. It's, it's real, it's trustworthy, it's reliable. Jesus is not just a myth. He was a real guy who lived, who taught things about God, who claimed to be God, who did amazing miracles, who was put to death and who came back from the dead. And all of these things can be checked out historically. What is it that makes Christianity different from other religions? Well, we said in the last video, grace. Grace is why I want to believe in Christianity. But it's not just grace. What makes Christianity unique from all other religions? Grace and truth. Like this video if it's been helpful. Hit subscribe and the little bell if you want to get the other content that we make. And make sure you uh, leave a comment saying hi and telling us if there are any other questions that you would like us to answer for you.